हेलो एवरी वन सो वी हैव बिन गिवन दिस क्वेश्चन विच स्टेट दैट वी हैव टू फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ द इंडक्टर एल फॉर विच द वी इन एंड आई इन हेयर शुड बी इन द सेम फेज राइट वी हैव बिन गिवन दैट कैपेसिटर हैज एट माइक्रोफेराइट एंड द रजिस्टर हैज फोर ओम्स सो वी हैव टू फाइंड लाइक वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द सेम फेज राइट इन द नेक्स्ट लाइट आई विल टेल यू वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ द सेम फेज ऑल्सो वी हैव टू फाइंड द रेशो ऑफ इनपुट वोल्टेज ओवर करेंट फॉर that case right for this case in which the input and voltage and current are in the same phase so let's go to the next slide so basically what does same phase mean like uh, if you guys have studied phasor diagram uh, like you will be able to relate in this so basically by same phase we mean if we write the v in right if we take v in as a reference then the i in should also lie in the same plane as v in right it shouldn't have any angle with the reference plane this i in i in is basically this current right this current so this i in and v in should lie in the same phase that's what this means now for that we will solve this question using like three methods so the first method method 1 is basically the phasor diagram method okay phasor diagram method so what is the phasor diagram method so basically what we'll do is we'll assume that this v in is like reference then we'll have two currents right let me take this circuit to the next slide here we have two currents right one is i1 another is i2 so and this whole is v in right this whole voltage through both of the uh, parallel combination is v in so what we observe is this i1 current right this i1 current will lead the uh, vein because there is a capacitance presence here so due to this capacitance the i uh, it will tend to lead the voltage input voltage and this i2 current right will lag the like input voltage as there is a inductor present so how will the i1 look like i1 will look something like this it will lead the input voltage and there will be some uh, like angle phi1 and how will the i2 look like i2 will basically look like lag and this will like angle will be phi2 because it is lagging inductor uh, like tends to lag so what the question tells us to do is it wants us to keep the total i in phase right in phase so for that like what is i what is i in i in is basically i1 plus i2 so if i in is the summation of both of this so for that like if we do the uh, break the i1 and i2 into rectangular components what we will will we get we will get is basically if we break it right this will be i1 sin theta phi1 if i just draw this this will be i2 sin phi2 right so what is asking is that this both like components should cancel each other out so that we have only one component and look what is this component this component through the reference right is basically i1 cos phi1 plus i2 cos phi2 right so the reference component should only remain and the other component should cancel each other out then we'll like get the i in current as in same phase so what do we have to equate we have to equate basically this magnitude of i1 sin phi1 should be equals to magnitude of i2 sin phi2 right so what is magnitude of i1 and what is sin phi1 and phi2 right so sin phi1 should basically equal to like this 1 by c omega by z right so we have to draw the impedance triangle so this is the impedance triangle basically this is the like xc this is the r and this is the z right z so if we draw the impedance triangle so this is the phi1 right so if we draw the impedance triangle we will get like xc by z equals to sin phi1 that's how we are getting this one right next is 1 by c omega and sin phi2 is basically omega into l divided by z okay so we have got like this is z1 and this is z2 right now we have got this one also what is i magnitude of i1 magnitude of i1 is basically vn by z1 
and magnitude of i2 is basically vn by z2 right and this is like the magnitude of this everything is magnitude here right everything is magnitude so like now putting this into value right so we have vn by mod of z1 into sin phi 1 is basically 1 by c omega by mod of z1 equals to vn by mod of z2 times omega into l divided by mod of z2 so here like what happens this vn and vn cancel each other out now we have been left with basically 1 by uh, this like mod of z1 square equals to omega square lc divided by mod of z2 square right now what is z1 and z2 square z1 square is basically r square plus 1 by c omega square right and z2 mod of square is equal to r square plus omega l whole square so if, if we sub substitute these values so we get as like if i put the z2 in the left hand side so we have l square equals to like if i divide this uh, omega square here lc and we have r square plus 1 by c omega square right now if i rewrite this equation right this is omega square l square equals to omega square lc r square plus omega square cancel each other out this is l by c so what is happening is that we are getting r square minus l by c and if we take common omega square right omega square l common we take we have l minus c r square l minus c r square should be equals to zero now like this equation should be valid for all frequencies right that's how we will get the independent uh, like uh, parameter take independent frequency parameter so this omega can't be zero this l can't be zero so this has to be zero and also this has to be zero right both of this has to be zero at same time if we just observe this carefully like both of these are like telling us the same thing right basically r square should be equal to l by c so what should be the value of l l should be equal to c r square so what is c in our case c in our case basically is like uh, 8 micro and r is 4 ohm so 8 micro and 4 ohms this is 16 right so this is 128 micro henry right so we are getting the value of like inductor as 128 micro henry now from here we can find the i n right what is i n i n equals to i1 cos phi 1 plus i2 cos phi 2 right now if we just like uh, find the values similarly for that case now we know the value of l right if we just find what is cos phi 2 cos phi 2 is basically r by mod of z1 sorry uh, mod of z2 cos phi 1 equals basically r by mod of z1 right so and what is i1 i1 is basically v in by uh, v in by mod of z1 and that is i2 okay so if we go to the next slide so i in equals to v in r by z1 mod of z1 square plus r by mod of z2 square okay so v in by i in equals to basically z1 square plus mod of z2 square divided by r okay this will be the value and this value comes out to be basically r right if we just equate solve for the case we have already found r square equals to l by c so if we equate that case for up here then we will get the value as r so this is the first method this is a bit bit uh, like a lengthy method so this is basically how we do solve it in like phasor diagram right next uh, we will solve this using uh, a different method like a intuitive method so let me take the circuit again right let me just draw the circuit here now here one thing we observe is that it wants us to like tell that the 
like input and uh, vein and ion should be in the same phase right so if i observe like i am looking at this like a uh, bridge circuit so if i make both of these terminals like uh, same potential then i may be able to find that the input and uh, input current and input voltage are at like uh, same phase so if i just redraw this circuit again so if i redraw this circuit right this is c this is r and this is l right this is v in this is i in and here is one current i1 here is one current i2 so like what we can do is first relation we know is i in is equals to i1 plus i2 right that we know right next is if we want this potential to be same what do we need to do basically uh, like make that bridge equation uh, like satisfy that equation right so what that bridge equation states us the opposite impedance multiple should be like equal right so r into r r into r should be equals to 1 by cs into ls right so 1 by cs into ls so r square equals to l by c that's what it's telling us so if for some reason this and this potential is same right if both of this potential are same what is happening this and this potential is same so if i write the kvl equation right now what will happen let me write the kvl equation from here we are going from here to here right so v in plus i1 times r plus so one thing also we need to keep in mind that the potential is same between this point and this point right but this is like a virtual like shot but here no sorry this is like a virtual shot but here no current flows through right flows through like in between right this is just a virtual shot right but actually there is no current between them because actually there is no interconnection between those two points right so the current through here is i2 only none of the current flows flows through here because actually there is no interconnection so this is i2 times r equals to 0 so vi equals to i1 plus i2 times r what is vi what is i1 plus i2 i1 plus i2 is basically i n right so we get vi equals to i i n times r so vi divided by i n equals to r so we are seeing that the like input resistance is like independent of frequency right it's only r so what is this condition satisfying this condition is satisfying basically for this condition right r square should be equals to l, l by c r square should be equal to l by c so basically what we can do is from here we can find the value of l so l equals to r square c we'll get the same value again 128 micro and right that's what this uh, like method 2 method 2 is basically Wheatstone bridge method right Wheatstone bridge method now uh, we'll go, go to the like next method which is method 3 which is basically the impedance method which is the like lengthier uh, approach like i won't solve it here it will be much lengthy for me to solve here so basically what we'll do is like what what is the impedance we are seeing right we are seeing the impedance as r plus 1 by cs times r plus sl divided by 2r plus 1 by cl plus sl right this is the zn so from here we will uh, like uh, write s equal to j omega and then equate for the imaginary part to be zero and as it states that input and input voltage and current should be in the same phase so imaginary part should be zero hence like we have to make the imaginary part zero from here if we make the imaginary part zero then we will get the like input resistance right